There were a group of about 35 campers out in the middle of nowhere, but they needed to get to Denver, Colorado to catch a train at midnight. How could God possibly get them all down there in time? The story is amazing, and you're going to hear about it next on this episode of Better Life Today. Hello and welcome to this episode of Better Life Today. We're doing a Stories of Faith program, which we love to do because we tell of the works of God. And you're going to hear about more about that in just a minute. With me is Sayidi. Sayidi, are you with us? Yes, yeah, hello. You're joining us over the internet. We're very happy to have you as always. We love these Thank stories, you. don't we? We sure do. Yeah, <laughs> it's a great thing. It's a great thing to talk about God and his wonders and the things that he does. Thank He's you. so creative. And um, in fact, the name of today's program is God has a thousand ways, and people are going to find out just how creative God is while we tell them the stories we've got coming up. But first mm-hmm. of all, I thought we would talk about blessings, maybe, that have happened to us. I wanted to share one that happened to me. The other day, maybe about two weeks ago or so, I was driving home from Eugene. It's about a two, two and a half hour drive, and it was coming to be sunset. Here's a picture of the beautiful sunset that day. This was taken that day, and as I was driving, it finally got dark. I was going along, and this is the time of year where you'll come upon sometimes a deer. And there mm-hmm. was a deer on the freeway right in my lane. The well, freeway. Thanks to the Lord, I was able to veer off into the lane to my left, lane number mm-hmm. one, and get around it. It didn't jump anyway. It didn't jump into the other lane or anything. And I safely navigated around it. But that, you know, in this season, that can cause a lot of problems, a lot of damage. Mm-hmm. And it, it can cause injury in the, given the right situation. So I praise the Lord that uh, he, he saved me from danger that night. Amen. Yeah. Amen. How about you, Sadie? How you been doing? I'm doing good. As yeah. a matter of fact, we had some deer in the backyard today. So, yep. Oh, that's and wonderful. God is good. We yeah. saw them and we were not in danger like you, but <laughs> we praise God for them. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. Well, Sadie, we've got a really good verse. We always choose yes. verses, I think, that really enhance the program. Would you share our special verse for today? Yes, it's found in the book of Philippians, chapter 4, verse 19. Philippians 4, 19 says, My God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Oh, that is wonderful. You know, I like the fact that we ask for things in Christ's name. Mm-hmm. When Jesus came to this earth, there was a vision. Remember the vision about the ladder that reached from earth, Jacob's ladder? Yes. Uh, what our audience... If you if you may not know, is that ladder represents Jesus, right? Because of Jesus and His sacrifice, He has linked us together with heaven. We can mm-hmm. ask for blessings from heaven because of Jesus. Without mm-hmm. Jesus, there would be no link. He provides that link. So when we pray, we end our prayers with "In Jesus' name." We want to just wrap mm-hmm. our request with our Savior. Uh, mm-hmm. There is a quote that I really like that I wanted to share. It's from the book Ministry of Healing. And it's by um, an author I really appreciate, Ellen White. And the quote says this, Our Heavenly Father has a thousand ways to provide for us of which we know nothing. Hmm. How do you like that, Sayuri? Of which we know nothing. Yeah. So today we want to share with you some stories. Stories of God working in incredible ways, being very creative. And uh, I've got some stories and Sayuri does. Sayuri, do you mind if I start out? Please, please go ahead. The story I first wanted to share with you involves a group of pathfinders. Now, our audience may not know what pathfinders are. In Mm -hmm. the Seventh-day Adventist Church, we have a group that's kind of like Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts. It's one group that combines both the boys and the girls, and we call them pathfinders. So instead of scouts, they're called pathfinders. And they get together, and they learn things. They learn how to do crafts. Uh, They get honors by doing different things, woodworking or knots or whatever thing, similar things that what you find in the Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts. And they go on camping trips. They, um, just a lot of fun things. It's a good program for the youth. Well, the story I wanted to share with you today involved a group of Pathfinders. The leadership of that group decided back in 1984 that the following year in 85, they were going to have a big campery. A campery is where you get all the Pathfinder groups 
from around the country together in one place. Can you imagine, mm -hmm. Saidi, all those kids in one place? But this yeah. was an international campery. They wanted to bring people from around the world. So this was going to be a big, a big event. So they started working to do it, and they, they gave the responsibility of figuring out the logistics to our friend Dick Dirksen. Uh, Saidi, you know Dick, right? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He did a um, camp meeting. Uh, series mm -hmm. for us one one year. That's right. He's a really good storyteller, and uh, he was the guy for the job. So he started in, and they said, "Well, how many pathfinders are we going to have? Um, maybe six thousand." Then I think it jumped to eight thousand, and then I mm -hmm. think it went to fourteen thousand. They were estimating. Imagine all these kids. So Dick's job was to figure out: okay, we got to have bathrooms, we got to have water, we have to have food. Uh, they brought in extra campers as guest rooms for the people. Uh, mm -hmm. This was going to be a big event. The place they chose to have it was Camp Hale, Colorado. Camp mm -hmm. Hale. Now, Camp Hale's out in the mountains in a little valley, and it used to be an army base, I think a training base, but okay. it had long been cleared out, I guess, and it was empty. Everything, I guess, mm -hmm. that had been there was removed. It was now a flat area. But they um, put in a request with Col the state of Colorado that they could bring the kids there and put them in that valley, set up their tents and do everything they want to do for these potentially 14,000 people. And they wrote in, they were starting to make progress in this. It's a big thing. It's like a little army yourself trying to figure out how to bring that many people and kids in. And as he was working, um, one of the directors called him one day and said, there's a problem. Well, what's the problem? The state of Colorado says that we have to have a child care license of some kind uh, to do this kind of operation. Um, I want you to fix it. He wanted Dick to take care of the problem. So uh, a few days later, sometime later, he got in the mail a book, 250 pages of a manual about this mm. child care thing they had to do. He looked it over and said, this is impossible. They want us to do all these things. And we can't do all these things. For instance, I think it was every seven kids had to have a, a toilet, a bathroom, a to mm -hmm. bathroom toilet. And it's like, well, that would be like 2,000. He was thinking, estimating at the time, 2,000 toilets? The, the things that they were asking were not really suitable for what they wanted to do, just for eight days. So he said, well, what are we going to do? So they started praying. He got his family together. He got the other, other organizers together, and they were praying. And mm -hmm. he decided that he would go out and talk with the gentleman who had sent the letter. It was a Mr. Frank, he calls mm -hmm. him. So he gets a plane ticket, calls up Colorado, Denver. Uh, can, I, can I come visit and talk to Mr. Frank? Okay, you can. He flies all the way out to Denver, gets in there, goes to the building, goes up the elevator. It's an old elevator, you know. Goes up to the hallway, kind of a foreboding place, concrete hallway. Goes in there, goes up to the door, fourth floor, walks in. There's a the secretary. I'm here to see Mr. Frank. Mm -hmm. uh, she looks over and calls over, Frank, he's here. <laughs> Not a very nice welcome, per se. Yeah. He's here, yeah. Frank pops his head up. Big guy, big black beard. Mm -hmm. Motions him to come over. Still, Dick is praying. Lord, we need your help. If we don't have your help, Lord, we are not going to be able to have this event. Um, mm -hmm. So may your will be done. May we see your power. He was praying all of these things. He goes over and begins to talk to him. And this Mr. Frank guy was like, no, I'm sorry. Rules are rules. You're going to have to do these things. Uh, doesn't matter why you're, how, many, how many kids or why or how or what. He says, you have to do these rules. So they're standing up to shake hands to say goodbye. And my, our friend Dick is thinking, Lord, we need help. It's like the last minute. The guy goes to shake his hand and says, nice to meet you or whatever he said. Uh, what's your name again? Dirksen, he says. Uh, and so this big guy, Mr. Frank, says, Dirksen, are you, do you have any relatives here in Colorado? And uh, our friend Dick Dirksen says, well, yeah, I've, I've got an uncle. He, um, he's a doctor here. And he says, you're Dr. Dirksen's nephew? Mr. Frank says this. He goes, yeah? He goes, sit down. And his eyes, his, his whole expression changes. He says, um, I think he said it was last year, my wife and I having a child and uh, had complications. And Dr. Dirksen, by the way, Dr. Dirksen delivered a lot of babies, thousands of babies. Dr. Dirksen was there to help with the delivery. He says, and we didn't know if we were going to lose my wife. We didn't know if we were going to lose my son. But Dr. Dirksen came in there. He put a cot in that room. And, he's, and he had, was in that cot in my wife's room for three days, helping wow. to make sure everything was okay. So his whole demeanor of Mr. Frank changed. Yes. Now he's introducing 
uh, Dick Dirksen to everybody in the office. This is Dr. Dirksen's nephew. And on mm -hmm. they go. And boy, the mood has changed like that. <laughs> they finally go to the, the director's office, the big, the big big wigs office, you know, opens the door. I want you to meet Dr. Dirksen's nephew. He's doing this Pathfinder thing, and they're going to Camp Hale. And by the way, a little bit before that, uh, Dick Dirksen had happened to mention that um, uh, doc, Dr. Dirksen is an Adventist, of course, and also a Pathfinder. <laughs> so now they're in the big wigs office, and he says, yeah, they're doing this thing at Camp Hale, mm -hmm. and I think we should just okay it. Good program, whatever. Mm. He got his permit without having to be a child care service. The Lord was able to change the situation in an instant. At the moment when Dick Dirksen thought that there was no possibility, the Lord switched it around. I think they wow. had nearly, when it was said and done, I think nearly uh, somewhere around 18,000 maybe oh, wow. people were there. A huge event. And I want to show mm. a picture. Dick Dirksen sent me a picture to share with you. This is Camp Hale. When it was mm -hmm. filled with the Pathfinders, you can see what a big project this would have been. And it happened because the Lord did something totally unexpected. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Now, Saidi, do you have a story to share, too? I do. Yeah. I do. We are recording this in the year 2020. Mm -hmm. And as I think everybody knows, this has been a very challenging year for many of us. And at our home... Um, something happened that uh, hurt um, all of us. Uh, my father passed away uh, in July and it was very difficult. Um, you know, we prayed and, and we are very, very thankful to God because his last moments, he was at, with so much peace and he, he loved the Lord and, and he's now resting and we have the hope of seeing him again. Um, so this story is of my mom, um, my mom, uh, and my dad tomorrow would have been married for 53 years. Mm. And so that's a, a long time, you know, and, and she misses him so much. Well, at the beginning when everything happened, um, we praise God because we were very together, the, our family, our, all of moms and dads, children, all of us. Um, just, you know, taking care of mom and just wanting the very best and uh, family members were calling and, you know, checking on mom and, and you always have this group of people that, um, they just are there and praise the Lord for that. Um, but then you also have a, maybe one or two that don't know maybe how to help. Um, and it's okay not to know. I mean, you can ask, you just need to be there, you know? Um, to say, I'm here, mm. or I listen. Well, there was one person that um, maybe said a couple of things, maybe not thinking, that was very hurtful for mom, especially after you've gone through something like that. And so then we started praying that mom will be surrounded by people that would help her mm. through this pain. Now it's been four months and you know, the Bible verse that we read where it says, my God shall supply for all your needs. Mm -hmm. There's many times that we think of that Bible verse and we think of money. <laughs> you know, God's going to supply for me and other material things. Well, in this case, we were praying that mom will be uh, supplied of her need of comfort, of hope. And let me tell you, God, that prayer, God has been bringing people left and right just comforting her in amazing ways. People, but also Bible verses, sermons, music. There's a hymn that she just loves. And all of a sudden she's hearing it everywhere. <laughs> day by day is the hymn. Um, but it's very beautiful because she says that there are moments where she starts getting sad again and it's okay to be sad, but there's moments like that. And God just sends the right person at the right time. And so it's almost like every day there's a new person, you know, somebody added. Even this morning I was talking to her on the phone and she says, you would never guess who called me. Someone that she hasn't talked to in many years, right? But it's just beautiful to see the way that God is providing uh, for the need of a mom, of a, of a wife um, that has gone through so much. God is good. And 
we see the thousand ways that he is able to provide for my mom in comforting her. Oh yes, yeah. We sometimes it's not physical needs you need. You need a spiritual lift. And mm -hmm. you know what's really neat, Sayudi, is when you can be an answer to somebody's prayer. Amen. So in That's the morning, true. you know, we can pray and say, Lord, so you may have somebody out there who needs to be encouraged. You may yes. have somebody out there who needs to smile. Mm -hmm. Use me. Use mm. me Amen. to make somebody's day. And then yeah. we can have our part. We feel good. The person we help feels good. And God feels good. <laughs> mm, we could be part of that Bible verse. <laughs> That's right. God does have a thousand ways. Well, friends, we have more stories to share, but we're going to take a short break, and then we'll be right back. So stay with us for more Stories of Faith. Better Life Broadcasting is a viewer-supported Christian media ministry that offers streaming programming via apps on various devices. Please visit blbn.org to support Better Life or to get more information. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Hello and welcome back to Better Life Today. We're doing stories of faith, and I'm with Sayudi, as always, when we do these stories. Sayudi, let's bring you on here. There you are. Thanks to video links, we are able to talk, even though we are a few miles apart right now. Mm -hmm. But the Lord, it's just like the Lord, though. We can still, we can still um, talk to the Lord over great distances, and you and I can talk over great distances electronically. We want to mm -hmm. share some more stories with you today. Um, I was telling the story in the first hour about what happened at Camp Hale. Remember, Sayudi, that big Pathfinder mm -hmm. event that happened? Part two, my second story I want to share with you, uh, is a different story, but it happened at that same event. Remember, the Pathfinders are gathered in this small valley in Colorado called Camp Hale. It used to be an army base, and our friend Dick Dirksen had helped set it up so that all these people could come together and have a wonderful eight days together as Pathfinders, young people, which is like Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts. Well, all good things come to an end, and the time comes when it's time to tear down camp. So the people start leaving, and this group goes that way, that group goes this way. They may go in motorhomes, they may go in buses, but you got a lot of people to clear out, and they do clear out. <laughs> well, it comes to the end, and Dick is, Dick's responsibility is to go through and make sure everything's clean. When they leave, it's supposed to be, you're not supposed to be able to tell that they were even there. Everything's right. gone. So are the, are the showers or whatever taken down? Yes. Water trucks, whatever, whatever they were using for that, that's gone. They had teepees to register the kids. The teepees mm -hmm. are taken down. They even, from, from the D.C. area, had somebody bring out a replica of the Washington Monument, I believe. Mm -hmm. That had to come down. So you take all these things down. The kids are going home. It all clears out. And he's going through checking on last things. Uh, one of his friends says, um, Dick, you better check. There's still a group of Pathfinders here. There's a group of Pathfinders here still. Yeah, they're down over there. You better go talk to them. Is there a problem? Go talk to them. <laughs> he goes down to them. They are from Mexico, about 35 people from Mexico. Mm. And he walks up to them and says, uh, is there any problem? And the leader, who speaks a little broken English, says, uh, no problem. Um, we are waiting for a bus. We ask God to send us a red bus. <gasps> he says, okay, okay, that's mm. good. Uh, Dick looks around. He sees that it looks like it might be raining, so he hopes the bus comes soon. Uh, and he says, now, which company have you hired to be your bus to take you down? Because the man said that they had to get down to Denver to catch a train at midnight. And so wow. the leader, the Spanish leader, looks at him and says, uh, we have not hired anyone. <laughs> You've not hired anyone? No, we asked God to send the bus because he knows that we do not have uh, enough money to pay for one. Oh, wow. You don't have enough money to pay for it, so you just prayed to ask God for a bus? Yes. <laughs> then the leader says, do you want to pray with us? And Dick said, yes, I want to pray with you. Yeah. yeah prayer. Afterwards, Dick said, I'm going to go continue tearing down the camp, making sure everything's gone, everything's cleaned up. Um, he probably said, I'll see you later or something. And he takes mm -hmm. off. So Dick Dirksen is down there, our friend Dick. He's down there doing the rest of his work, and he's thinking to himself, they don't have a way down? If <laughs> It might rain? What am I gonna, where are we going to put them if it starts to rain? They need to get down. There's a, they have to catch a train at midnight. 
So Dick starts praying to the Lord, Lord, I don't know what to do with these people. I don't know what to do. Um, we don't have the transportation here. Um, could you please, could you please send them a bus? And if you happen to have a spare red one, they'd like, <laughs> they'd like a red bus. Mm. Well, he's going about his business when all of a sudden there's, a, there's movement over on the road, maybe a swirl of dust. And up next to his Jeep, I think he was driving a little Jeep, up next to his Jeep, pulls, guess what, Sayuri? The red bus. A red Aww. bus. And he looks inside, and it's empty. And the window opens wow. up, and the guy, the driver peeks out, I'm sorry I'm late. I was supposed to pick up a group of Pathfinders from Pennsylvania, but I was having engine trouble. Oh. And he goes, um, he, our friend Dick is thinking, Pennsylvania. No, they already went with somebody else. They're already gone. So the bus driver mm -hmm. says, oh. He says, well, since I'm here, is there anything else I can do for you? Mm -hmm. He says, I'm going to Denver. And the gas <sighs> has been paid for. Mm -hmm. Dick can't believe it. He looks over and points to the Pathfinder group down there. He says, as a matter of fact, they're waiting for you right down there. The oh, bus driver says, ah, thanks, or whatever, and tears down the road and picks up those Pathfinders. They're gathering their stuff together because the bus that they prayed for had arrived. Arrived. Wow. Amazing. Praise the Lord. I'm just, Praise the when Lord. I heard that story, I was like, I want to serve the God of the red bus. Yes. <laughs> the unexpected. Oh, that's a beautiful story. Yeah. Very so nice. you, you have a story to share with us too, don't you? Yes, yeah. I do. It's a little bit embarrassing, but I will oh, share it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Last week, mm -hmm. I was um, getting ready. Tony had gone, my husband had gone to church to lead out a prayer meeting. Uh, we have two prayer meetings at our church, one like around 1 p.m. and the other one in the evening. And so he had gone to the first one and I was with the baby at home, but I needed to get somewhere at two o'clock. And so I was kind of late, just a couple minutes, you know. And so I go really quickly, I get the baby and get her into the van and I get her all buckled up and I go into the driver's seat and then I do something I've never done before. What is that? See, usually we pray before we go. Mm -hmm. Well, this time I, I thought, well, I'll pray, you know, once we get out, <laughs> we'll start praying there. And also um, it was just too fast. I didn't even look at anything. I just kind of pulled back while the garage door was still going up. Oh boy. Oh, I boy. crashed into the garage door. Oh, you heard no. the bump. I mean, praise the Lord that the baby and I were 100% fine. The car is good, no problem. But the garage door mm -hmm. would not go up and would not go down. <laughs> so now we were stuck inside oh. the garage. And we needed to get to pick up somebody at two o'clock. Mm -hmm. And so I'm praying, God, you know, first prayer, what are we going to do? So I called Tony, 911. <laughs> <laughs> and he's leading the prayer meeting. So uh, I called, maybe I called and I texted, and he asked somebody to lead out while he went to get the call. And I tell him what had happened. Mm. And so he was able to move things around, texted the person and they said, you know, we're going to be there a little bit late. And he was able to pick up who he needed to pick up. But the thing is that um, now we had the problem of the garage door. Mm -hmm. And it's scary because we couldn't bring it all the way down. And, you know, we needed to have it closed because of the nighttime and safety. Well, God provided the way we were able to bring it down. Tony worked hard at it and, and he was down. Now our big problem, we were not expecting this to happen. And that evening, Tony comes and he's like smiling. And I'm thinking, oh, you know, I know, I don't know how much this is gonna be, but it's probably gonna be a lot. And he tells me, you know, God is good. And then he shows me a check that had just arrived that we were 100% not expecting. Out of the blue, this check, this check comes in, right? Mm -hmm. And 
And I'm thinking, it's probably not going to be that amount. I mean, maybe we're going to have a little extra. <laughs> I just thought that it was not going to be that expensive. Well, a week has gone by. Thankfully, the garage door, you know, nobody has broken in or anything. It is closed. We are safe. But today we were able to receive the amount of how much the garage door, fixing the garage door is going to be. And you will not believe it. Don't tell me. It's still, it's it's very close to the amount on the check mm -hmm. where we're even going to have that little extra that I was thinking of. <laughs> and, oh. you know, that is just God. You know, I know it was my mistake. It was bad not thinking it through and not praying right before it. Mm. But, you know, he does provide for us. And I was just praising the Lord for that. You know, it goes back to God has a thousand ways to provide mm -hmm. for our needs, which Amen. we know nothing. And Saida, Amen. you reminded me during this time that prayer is so important. When you leave, when you start your day, pray for the Lord to send his angels to protect you. Amen. It's so important. Friends, our time is drawing to a close, but I wanted to share with you to invite you to visit our website at blbn.org. And at our website, you can find our streaming video. You can find our program schedules. You can find on-demand videos, all kinds of cool things. And uh, if you want to send us a message, you'll find a way on the website to send us a message. And we'd love to hear from you. We're hearing from people all over the world, and they're sharing. And some are sending in their stories. And they have amazing stories that we want to share on future programs. So we'd love to hear from you. And we'd love to hear how God is blessing you. And I know some of you have put in special prayer requests. And I would encourage you to be patient because God hears you. But the answer may not come immediately, but he hears you and he knows what's best for you. So mm -hmm. leave, leave your life with God. For now, remember to give your life to God, to do what he says, and you too can have your own story of faith.